Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the uh, coaches call. This is Stephen Miller. Uh, I'm uh, with uh, Eastern New Mexico University out of Rio Dosa, New Mexico. We're a branch community college and I'm with the uh, the NCL Ops team and the coaches ambassador, you might say. But uh, so uh, uh, we look forward to uh, answering your questions on today's topics. And uh, uh, Caitlin, I guess, uh, are you? Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you guys. Okay. Okay. You can do an introduction, Caitlin. Oh, sorry. Hi. Um, I'm a little sick, so I'm a little out of it today. Um, my name is Caitlin Bestenheider. I am a teacher at Rockland County BOCES. It's a career tech high school. Um, I teach cybersecurity. Uh, I'm also a graduate student at Pace University and a scholarship recipient there. Um, because of my stuff with NCL and my women in tech uh, outreach, uh, I actually don't have to pay for tuition, so it's really great. Uh, and I'm like the chief student ambassador for the National Cyber League. I can't hear anything. I don't know if it's not working. All right. Um, let's see. Stephen, do you want to give your background as a NCL coach? Yes, Dan. Thank you. Uh, well, I started coaching back in uh, 2014, and uh, uh, we had a, just one team uh, at that time. We had, uh, I think we had seven students on that team. And uh, it was a, uh, we had no, at that time, we had no real uh, integrated course. We just wanted to try out the, uh, the competition. We had one student that ended up uh, getting, uh, coming out 96 uh, overall. And uh, at the end of uh, that semester had like 18 uh, internship offers. So uh, and he's now uh, working at Presbyterian hospital in Albuquerque and working on his bachelor's degree. He's graduated from our school, but that sold us. Uh, uh, the, the enthusiasm that it brought to those students made us say, we really need to make this happen for everyone. So we incorporated it into our capstone class to start with. And uh, we also uh, included in our other uh, courses as a, a volunteer basis right now, but we're looking at incorporated in as the mandatory. Well, one way we try to uh, help the students uh, is that w in the capstone, it's covered in, as part of the lab fee so that they don't uh, uh, have to come up with it really out of pocket, especially if they're doing financial, uh, getting financial aid. So uh, uh, it's, uh, by the way, and uh, that, first, uh, that first time I actually participated and uh, it was so addictive, I got into trouble. My wife was on me, she says, what are you doing all day long <laughs> on that computer? And I miss supper and everything else. So it's addictive. Uh, and I can see why the uh, students love it. I'd say definitely. I, Caitlin probably, boy, she's had it. She's been a student and a coach, so she knows the, the best way. Yeah, um, Stephen, I can hear you. Dan, I can't hear you when you're talking. Like, there's just no sound coming out. Um, can you hear him now? I can hear you, but I can't, I can't hear Dan. Yeah, I can hear everybody but Dan. I see his mouth moving, but I can't. Same. Yeah. Same. So I'll relay the information for Dan. We're in the same. <laughs> we, we're, we're here at Wacom Community College with, for the CyberWatch West uh, uh, NVC and leadership meeting. So uh, we're in the same room together for a change. So I can kind of uh, coordinate, uh, Dan will pass information on. So Caitlin, why don't you talk about your experience uh, as uh, your first time to, uh, to coach NCL and, and probably play as well. 
Yeah, um, so my first coaching experience was pretty far apart from my first student experience. Um, I competed for the first time in fall 2015 as a student. I didn't sign up. I didn't know I was going to compete. I was voluntold by a very overly eager professor at Westchester Community College, um, and it was the best thing he ever did for me. He was like, oh, well, the school already paid for you. Guess you got to do it, and I got guilted into playing. I did really, really bad my first season. Like I didn't really know anything. Um, I could barely log onto my own computer. I came from a theater background. It was my first semester touching computers. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to do. I didn't know I wanted to go into cyber. I just knew that my boyfriend made more money than me and I was smarter than him. So I was like, hold up, I'm going back to school. I don't know what I'm gonna do, but this is gonna work. And um, I only captured something like 12 flags and like open source and tell because I could Google it and I didn't really know anything. Um, my very first game, but I didn't do terrible. Like I, I got some flags and then the next round of the same season, I found out that I was really good at cryptography and I killed that section. And then for me, password cracking was similar to cryptography and I built my skills one skill at a time, uh, but my school didn't really have a program to train you for NCL. So I can't remember if it was my second or third season. I was like, can I be team captain? I want to I wanna coach a team. And we had 36 other students sign up. So I coached uh, a whole team of like 36 uh, my very first coaching time. And it was crazy. And um, once I started to understand the competition and how you have to think to compete, it's not about your previous knowledge. It's about your approach to solving challenges. Once you learned that approach, um, like I would forget to eat, I would like, we now have the snack box that we prepare before the competition in case I don't come out of my office for like days on end. Um, and it's got like nutritious snacks and waters and caffeine and, um, you know, there's, there's been some times when I've been so mad that I've accidentally tossed a wireless keyboard out a window that I didn't know was open uh to like times that i have literally called people at 3 a.m to be like i figured it out um the rush you get when you get a flag is like nothing else and even still as a coach like watching watching my high school kids get flags is the craziest experience i i agree it is one of the uh things that you may want to share is the uh, the, uh, uh when you're a coach, uh, there's some things you can and can't do. Uh, you want to share yeah. that? <laughs> so it breaks my heart when I see that they're like this close to the flag, but I can't like tell them what they're missing. But uh, I've developed this really great system where when I'm coaching, I even, even in practice, I never tell them anything. I ask them questions until they go, well, I don't know. Well, Maybe you should look that up. And I'll ask them questions uh, just to get, get them thinking the same way I do. For example, um, one of the challenges that my guys ran into that they freaked out over was they saw a .sqlite file and they didn't know what that file extension meant. And they're like, well, what's the problem? I can't open it. Okay, why can't you open it? Because it's like a file type, I don't know. Did you Google that file type? So they look up like how to open .sqlite files and they find a bunch of tools and they're like, oh, you got to use a tool. All right, well, try it out, see what happens. And then they'll like install a couple of tools and they'll try them out. And then with that one, they'll get stuck and it says like database structure. And then the next tab over says like browse database. And they're looking at the structure, trying to get information. So I'll ask them things like, oh, so what are you trying to do? What is a database? What are you trying to accomplish? You know, how do you see what's inside the database? And then they'll be like, oh, wait, we can browse the database, duh. Um, so I never tell them what to do, but I'll, I'll ask them questions so that they can figure out how to like troubleshoot their own problem by what they, they don't know. I'll point out what they don't know and then they'll look it up. Thank you. All right. All right, can you hear me now? Yay. Great. All right. Um, Caitlin, I, I want to uh, give you a chance to uh, plug your upcoming talk at, at uh, YSIS. Can you give a little preview on what you're going to discuss in terms of coaching at the yeah. workshop? 
Um, so it's mostly designed for uh, students who haven't competed before and coaches who are on the fence about whether to um, sign up for the competition. It's called NoobSec to Cyber Champion, Hacking the National Cyber League for Success. And the first part of the workshop, we're going to talk about for maybe like 20 minutes. We're trying to be as quick as possible. All the benefits of um, specifically the National Cyber League, but hacking competitions as a whole. Um, it really gets your students, um, it gets their resumes noted. Like people, if I had the same resume as someone else and I had NCL experience, I was getting the offer. Um, and sometimes I would still get interviews for things I definitely wasn't qualified for because they could see my scouting report. Um, I could show them that like I can learn these things in, in on the job. Like just give me the opportunity and I'll, I'll you know, grow every season. So it's really advantageous when you go to interviews. It's great supplemental material for your resume. Um, and then kind of the workshop, we're going to go over a couple of sections from NCL. We're going to start with open source um, as one big group because open source is just Google it. And I'm hoping that we'll have enough mixed tables that like teachers can uh, sit at the same tables as students and see their enthusiasm when they realize that they do know this stuff. Like uh, one of the goals of the workshop is that you, as a student, you know way more than you think you do. Um, there's a statistic that says that women will only apply for jobs uh, if they have 100% of the requirements, whereas men will apply for jobs as, if they have as low as like 60% of the requirements. Um, and the same is true of like competitions, like people won't sign up for competitions if they aren't sure that they have some chance of success. And my goal of the workshop is to show you that everyone can be successful in this competition. If you don't know anything you have the skills to look up what you don't know while you're working. So it's a matter of reframing your brain to this is not a test. This is not like standard. You must know it before you go in. It's, um, it's more of a reframe how you think about a problem and what, what approaches should you take when you don't know the answer, because I promise you're not going to know how to do every challenge in the competition. And that growth is really what's important. So I'd like you and Steven to comment on this aspect of being a coach, because I, I really do think a competition is different from a class. In a class, it's the grade. But in a competition, there really shouldn't be a grade. However, there's a scouting report. So for both of you, how do you have students realize that a bad scouting report is not a bad thing, that it really is a marker, but it's something that really helps you in the future? You want me to take that first? Sure. Go ahead. So we don't uh, grade their performance in the competition in our courses. We, we grade that the grade they get is participating in the competition and uh, not just uh, the competition, but for the, the pre-competition. And uh, they, they give us feedback uh, on how that went. And then they get a grade for that. Then they, the individual uh, competition, and then the team competition. And uh, uh, sometimes we combine that the, the capstone class students with some other students that are outside that capstone. And, but we, re, we want the capstone students to take kind of the lead role uh, on the team uh, because they are the senior uh, level students and uh, it gives them some leadership experience as well. Uh, but the grades, the grades. not because uh, well, it's not the score that you made, uh, it's that you participated, that you learned from that, and, uh, uh, and that you'll have something you can put on your resume. Um, for me, I tell everybody that you're not competing against everyone else. You're only competing against yourself. Um, my first scouting report, I did so bad. Like, I can't express to you guys I didn't really know anything um, and I didn't really learn that much in my classes that helped me in the beginning because I was in like such entry-level classes they weren't teaching this stuff you know I was still learning how a computer turned on and how it worked and not how to break it and to you know do cryptography or log analysis like that was all higher level stuff that I just wasn't doing yet but um, what people have seen on my resume is that I had really rapid growth in the competition because the competition was long enough that if I didn't have a skill, 
I was going to learn something every single season, every single game of every single season, my skill set improved. And that's what I, I tell people all the time. Like, even though high school kids, like I have all boys and it's very difficult to be like, look how bad I did. And them not like make fun of it. And they do like, they'll make fun of how bad I did. And it hurts a little. Cause like, come on guys, I did my best. But, um, I show them, I'm like, yeah, but can you beat me now? Last season, I ranked, I think, 94th out, out of the overall, like, 3,500 competitors, and I got 47th or something like that in gold bracket. Like, I, all right, yeah, talk smack all you want, but try to beat me now. <laughs> and kind of that, that just showing them how important that growth is. Like, I've only been in cybersecurity since 2015. I didn't know how to turn on my computer myself in 2015. And now I'm competing in the top 100 nationally in this competition and I'm doing other competitions and I'm writing workshops on how to do really well in this competition. And I mean, NCL just named me their student ambassador. Like that much growth is all that you should look for in yourself. So even if your growth is less than that, it's still your own metrics. Like I don't care what anybody else does because the more people that come into the competition, the harder it is to get in the top 100. Like, it's not, it doesn't matter what place you rank. It matters that you do better than you did the season before every single season. I would agree with that. You learn as you go. That one of the things we're, we're doing now in our high school dual credit program, uh, it's just the introduction to information systems course. We really don't cover anything as far as technical uh, hands-on uh, labs or activities, but we still have the students participate just so they get that initial experience and understand that, uh, and they understand that we're not grading them. They, they're they not going to, if you get zero, that's okay. Uh, you learn from that. And, uh, but uh, I think it's important to get exposed to that problem solving uh, activity that you have to go through. And, and then as you uh, get the labs. We provide the labs to the students uh, as they go through the the, the uh, curriculum. Then uh, they can hopefully concentrate on those areas that they think that they need it to improve on. And also, as the coach, I kind of drive them in certain areas to say, "Hey, why don't you look at at, at taking these labs, going through these labs, and uh, check these challenges out, and uh, that you maybe that'll help you improve." I tell people all the time that there's no way for you to get zero flags because it, like, pardon my French guys, but if my dumb little self could, could figure something out in the first season, like Google it. There's a whole section called open source intelligent that should be called go Google it. Like Google should sponsor us and we should call it the Google it section. Um, because if you just know how to use Google, which I didn't do, I would Google like the exact question and I would get flags. Now I know like, you know, Google like advanced operators and stuff and I can do a lot more. But like when I was literally copying and pasting the questions into Google, I was, I was finding flags. You, anyone who's signing up for this competition cannot be any dumber than I was. Like, I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> you will not get so, zero. So I have, a, I have a question about Googling because I've seen the same with Cyber Patriot that on a Cyber Patriot team, you want to have a Googler. How do you teach Googling? How do you have someone know if they are a good Googler? How do you, how do you as a coach, coach Googling? Um, there was actually a lesson in my curriculum this year about Google dorking, and I've never heard that term before, but it's the advanced Google operators. Um, and I think those are helpful because sometimes, like, um, you're trying to look for a specific question, but like the exact same resource has it 50 times and you want to eliminate that resource. So knowing how to get rid of something like that. Um, but learning how to rephrase your question in a different way and to break it down into parts is the more important part. Like you can Google anything. Every part of this competition is available. If you know what to Google, it's more of thinking about how to break it into smaller parts for me. I think that's, I would agree with you. And uh, uh, that's, that's what we try to tell them that you can, if you just Google, if you cut and paste, like you had mentioned, Caitlin, uh, that not, that's, 
you'll get a couple, but you may have to break this down and do more advanced searches to really find out what you want. And uh, you don't want to give up. Just uh, keep, uh, think about uh, uh, what's another way, or another approach or another uh, uh, way to phrase that uh, question so that you might get those answers. Um, somebody asked for first time students and first time NCL coach, what do you recommend we focus on in their first season? Um, I have like a flow chart of how I teach it. I always start with the open source Intel. And then because I love cryptography and there's a lot of really great utilities out there to help them. I teach that second. Um, then I do log analysis because I've found a way to teach it using Excel, which is something most students, um, going through school now have to learn growing up. Um, I know Excel isn't like the best way to do it because you could use uh, Linux command line and get way better results. But, you know, just data filtering in Excel is a good way to get started in that field and to like understand what you're doing at like the most entry level. Um, then I add in password cracking because it's just a really great way to like I have like three learning objectives with it, uh, using a pre-made word list, creating a word list that's just um, uh, counting. Uh, I, I know there's a better word for that, but I'm super, I have a lot of NyQuil right now. Um, and then creating your own word list from a database. Like if you can do those three things and you know how to use like one utility, then you're good to go with that. And then the other skills, like I tell them, you know, in your first season, like that's all I'm ever going to focus on. Um, you know, my, my kids are coming up on their second season and they're learning a lot of Nmap, they're learning, you know, Wireshark, they're learning um, some a little bit of web exploit. Um, but the first season, like I, I, I focus in on those like smaller areas and I, I focus on like the easy parts. Like I'm not expecting anyone your very first time to get out of the gate and go absolutely crazy. Um, so, so one thing we're doing this year is we're for this season is we're promoting to high schools and by promoting to high schools i think we're topping in tapping into the cyber patriot community we have some cyber patriot coaches on the call so those of you that are first-time coaches or your cyber patriot coaches making the transition to ncl do you have any questions about how there may be some synergy between the two um i, I think that actually the the checklist may be a way to leverage your cyber patriot experience with ncl um caitlin do you have um your students use a checklist approach when they go into an ncl competition do they, do they take notes into the competition um so we use challenges very similar to old challenges because i've um as a competitor i took meticulous notes going through ncl and i realized i basically have like a wonderful collection of previous challenges so I use those um, to try to create my own challenges. Like sometimes I can't like a dot SQLite file. I don't know how to make that. I'm going to be real honest, but like it's such a good thing to just throw in there. So I throw them the file and I make my own questions about it uh, just because I still want them to run into some of those same uh, problems. Um, a bunch of people asking about like workshop checklist challenges curriculum. Um, I'm sorry I'm being like a little vague about it because uh, my workshop is coming up on the 22nd. I think, yeah, the 22nd is Thursday. Um, the 22nd of March, I think we are live streaming it on the NCL Facebook Live, and I'll be posting materials from it for you guys to have forever and ever. Um, so that it, it's basically going to be like my, if you only have like four to six hours to teach NCL, what can you do in that four to six hours to get your students ready? Um, it's not an advanced, like how to come in the top 100. It's it's how to get started for the very first time so that first time competitors, first time coaches, uh, you know, first time anything aren't afraid. Like there shouldn't be fear going into these competitions. It should be nothing but excitement. It's like, you're gonna go like build a sand castle on the beach. Like it should be like the best part of your year. But I'm waiting to post all that material until after the workshop, like, sorry. So for our uh, first time students, which are mainly the dual credit students or those taking that introduction to information systems, uh, we, uh, we do the same thing. We don't really, the cryptology is not our bag. So we do that last. 
but we do do the open source first, uh, the logs and uh, the password cracking, which a lot of them like the password cracking. I don't know, uh, that's really gets a lot of the uh, students turned on and uh, they really get a, uh, a thrill out of breaking those passwords. Uh, in the capstone class, so those students have been in the program and this is the end of their, uh, they're gonna probably graduate. And uh, so we uh, provide them with a set of labs. We use the NICE challenge for one thing because that, I don't know if you've used the NICE challenge, Caitlin, but uh, it, it, uh, it goes into more than just, uh, uh, you have to know the different systems, both the, uh, and the operating systems and the networking. And uh, so we picked out challenges in there that uh, relate to uh, some of the same puzzles we have in the NCL. And they're actually on the website if you want to look at the syllabi. Uh, and then we also use the uh, uh, InfoSec uh, labs and uh, we tie those to the, to the potential, uh, uh, both the ethical hacking and the, the uh, uh, CompTIA uh, lab so that they, they tie back to the puzzles. The, what we like about the InfoSec labs is that they have puzzle, they have challenges questions at the end of each one of those labs. So you're not just going through the lab and not, you know, anybody can walk through the steps in the lab, but can you actually solve a problem based on understanding how, how you do those different functions in, uh, in, for how to set up Wireshark, how, what, what do you need to do and exploit? So, uh, but we we don't uh, you know they're going to be on their own uh, in the in the in the uh, competition since they are and they're the leaders they need to lead the other students so that's kind of the approach that we take. Um, you were saying that like anybody can walk through a lab. Um, NCL has like my face on a quote on their website right now. Um, a lot of times in the classroom, labs give you like the perfect command and ideal conditions on the perfect target to get the exact result they're looking for. Um, what I love about NCL is that they give you a, a less than ideal target and they don't tell you what to do and they expect you to like figure it out. So I ran plenty of NMAP scans in labs and I had no idea what I was doing. And then, you know, NCL came and I started running some of the same commands trying to figure it out and then I really learned how to use like the NCL um like not the NCL oh so much NyQuil guys I'm sorry the NMAP like cheat sheets that have like all the little commands and what they do I started learning how to use those to adapt the commands and now like I'm really proficient with NMAP um so that's that's what's really great about this competition is it takes everything you're doing in the classroom to like the next level in a way that you're never gonna forget it. Because if you work hard enough to get one of those flags, you will never forget how you did it. I would agree. And uh, you can Google to get some of those uh, uh, commands in certain, uh, in, in each one of those uh, uh, tools, if you don't understand them. You should know them from the classes, but uh, uh, in some cases you may have to Google it. I watched so much YouTube during the competition. Mm -hmm. So, so I have a question for both of you, because the challenges can take a while. How do you help your players develop the um, courage to spend a long time getting to the point where they solve a challenge and not giving up? Well, uh, one of the th one of the areas that we tell them to uh, kind of use some, some organization and time management, try to solve some of the problems that, or the puzzles that are easier to start with. If you think if there's a, a, a medium level that you know, then go ahead and solve that. Uh, most of our students are gonna have problems with the hard, I mean, we're a community college and some of those are, especially in cryptology, we just don't, uh, spend enough detailed time on there. We need to get, I guess our, we need to uh, co-op with uh, Caitlin so we could get better, better at that. But anyway, that we try to uh, have them do the time management. If you get stuck on a problem and you don't spend any excess time on it, go on to something else or an area that you can solve. That's basically what we tell them. Also, we tell them not to forget at the end of the, uh, 
competition to fill out the questionnaire because you do get some points for that as well. It's an easy, no brainer. Yeah, so many of the people uh, on my teams throughout the years have forgotten to do the survey and it's always worth like 250 points. Like it has made the difference between somebody being in bronze and silver. And I was so like, I couldn't help it. It was like my first year coaching. I like couldn't stop crying, laughing about it. And I couldn't even like tell them. I was just like, okay, next time do the survey. And they were like, oh, wait, if I had got 250 more points, I would have been in silver. And I was like, and I was just dying laughing like I couldn't I I wasn't very professional <laughs> we had a team issue like that and they didn't they didn't fill it out at the end I I couldn't say anything I just sat there and watched just, oh no I write it on the board in the practice room like if we have um if we, when we're individually competing I just write it on the board but when during team if we have multiple teams like I have to be careful what I say because I'm usually on one of the teams and then like trying to still coach the other team without like any conflict of interest and also like competing and coaching at the same time is very difficult because I have to check my moral compass like I figured out answers while coaching someone else and not been able to submit those flags and I was like I technically knew this but I only figured it out while trying to help someone else and like I didn't feel like that was fair but one of the things I'll do is like write it on the board and as we're getting close to time I start like poking the board with a marker and making noise I'm not saying it. it was up before the competition opened, just pointing to the sign that I've had up all season. Um, last season, for the first time, I had 100% of my people complete the survey. <laughs> That's great. Do you have any comments about um, having um, students start playing this in high school, you know, ninth grade and, and 10th grade? Um, is there anything that you know, someone should know working with students at, at that age versus working with college students? Uh, be careful how you teach them password cracking. Uh, their brains aren't developed enough to have good moral compasses all the time. Um, I use Kane, which is a little too powerful, but that's how I learned it. And it's got this great GUI and I love like the way that it's laid out and I love the questions that I can ask to help them figure it out on their own. Uh, but you can also crack passwords for like windows with it really. And honestly, like going back, I definitely would use like a less powerful tool for that. Um, that's, that's like the only like flag that I've run into. Uh, I don't think that I would teach them like web exploitation at that age. Uh, it's not that I'm, uh, concerned about the co type of competition that we're doing it's just there's so many learning objectives put the ones that have a lot of power at the end like if they can get to that point perfect teach it to them in a heartbeat but if they have all those other skills first they're gonna they're gonna be more disciplined because they learned so much along the way to learn that much you have to have a, a sort of self-discipline so then then the trust is there uh, just make sure you have really good established trust on little things like that. But other than that, uh, some of my high school kids beat some of my college kids. Uh, I had five students and two of them ranked in silver their very first season. I didn't expect that um, at all. So don't underestimate them either. I expected my guys to do a little bit of crypto, a little bit of open source, and we'll see what happens. Um, I had a kid teach himself Nmap in the middle of the competition because he wanted to do it. I had a kid teach himself a WP scan because he wanted to figure out the WordPress challenge. Like they're teaching themselves things that I haven't even introduced in the classroom. And I know that they don't have any experience in this stuff outside of my classroom. And I'm watching them do challenges that I've never done. And it's just like, wow, like they definitely have the skills to do it. Um, they just need a little bit more monitoring. Do you have them sign any type of form? Like, I, I will not use this in bad ways. I will yeah. be uh, have ethical use. I think Cyber Patriot has an ethical document that they have the players sign. Yeah, I had them sign a bunch of paperwork like that. I had them write reports on the paperwork. I had them take quizzes on, like, ethics. And, like, I put in questionable ethic things to see, like, and I, I made it a quiz grade to make sure their ethics were on point. Um, 
it's just making sure they understand like the legality too, like how much trouble they could get in. Um, I showed the anonymous documentary in class to show like um, one of them, I know there's so many out there, but one of them talks about like the penalties that happened to all these people that got caught. Um, just to, I, I want to make sure that they understand the consequences, which is really hard at that age. But I mean, we also give kids baseball bats and expect them not to knock down mailboxes. And we, you know, some high schools teach archery and paintball and like all, all kinds of things. And, um, you know, we expect them to have, it, it's about making sure you have responsible students. Do you think by starting them in high school, you're attracting them to going into the cybersecurity field? Do you, do you try and connect them with with colleges or college students or even industry professionals? Yeah, I'm trying to actually uh, also coach at the community college that most of my students go to out of my high school program. Uh, so that way I can continue with them. And then like, it's not as scary to go off to college because you know, oh, there's gonna be an NCL team. I'm gonna make a lot of friends that way. And there's gonna be a familiar face there. I would agree. I think uh, uh, our dual credit students uh, uh, feel comfortable because uh, they're already uh, have gone through the uh, uh, certificate program by the time they finish high school and then they transfer in uh, working on their associate's degree. Uh, as far as our students uh, in the high school, the, the, the big, in the beginning, the, the newbies, they uh, uh, mainly uh, work on the open source activities and uh, and they're under uh, we have a, a a high school teacher that's working with them at the same time even though everything is online they do a lot of this during their labs uh, physical labs at the high school and they have controls on some of those uh, systems as well so we uh, that that's one of the ways we kind of uh, keep that in check about hacking uh, outside. But they are aware, uh, the course that we teach makes them aware of the uh, consequences of uh, illegally using tools that we, uh, will sh which they don't have access to until they get into the other uh, detailed courses. Um, let's see if the audience has any any questions for us. Please use the chat window to to ask your questions. We have about 30 people online, so we have a, a pretty good turnout today. Of course, when I'm sick and look like poop, that's when everybody shows up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not going to happen at Weiss's. <laughs> if past students can act as advisors yes 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 that's how I became a coach and I have more um, insight into the competition because I've actually competed but also um, we have t a two-year program at our high school so I'm having the year one students coach or the year two student my guys sorry so much NyQuil um, my guys coach the year one class who they're learning uh, the CompTIA A plus certification mostly for that course um, but we want to introduce them to cyber so that they know what to expect next year so we have my students who competed last season each took a learning objective so one kid's doing password cracking one kid's doing log analysis one kid's doing crypto we took whatever skill they were the best at and they're now a, a teaching a 30-minute lesson and then um, they have a workshop so we're setting up workshops around the, the different classrooms that we have in our program and each student can they have a checklist of the skills they were supposed to learn during this and they're going to go around to the different stations with the different leaders and have them to um, perfect their skills so they can sit down in small groups and work with with those previous students and have them be leaders um, but students are the best teachers for this, people who have competed, because they get really passionate about at least one section and they can teach that better than, than any of us can because you know we're trying to cover everything. They get to zone in on what they love. Like I always zone in on crypto when I teach it because I love crypto. Um, 
it's just a really great it's it's the uh, that is the best way in my opinion <laughs> Do you think there can be some synergy between, uh, say, a high school and a community college um, practicing together or you know, helping each other get ready for competitions? Maybe that's good for Stephen as well. One of the high school students just got accepted to um, Pace University, and I'm so happy for her. And of course, like she's a woman in tech, but uh, I told her, I was like, look, if you, she's going to Pace, she already paid her deposit. I was like, just start coming to practices. like. I'm cool with it. I'm the coach. So come hang out. And she's excited to continue her education to go to Pace, but also like she's making friends that she'll have as soon as she comes in as a freshman. And she has like her support group already because um, thankfully, like my Pace team is so great. And I'm, I'm coaching the leaders for next year because I don't know if I'll be there after I graduate. Uh, so having like kind of a plan in place to like let the students run it is is such a great opportunity so uh uh the high school students that we have are either going to come into our program or they may decide a lot of them are not actually uh, uh going to stay in cybersecurity. i actually i had a student the other day that was uh uh we live uh, in in the uh, Lincoln National Forest area. So he's going to be a firefighter, forest firefighter. And uh, he's, I, we had a paper to write about uh, protecting, uh, what are you gonna have to protect in your profession? And he says, well, I may have to protect the internet of things, which may be part of how my chainsaw works. And so he went into this whole <laughs> uh, scenario on how the hack, the, the uh, uh, automated anonymous uh, <laughs> a chainsaw. So, uh, uh, but it, you know, just the awareness that these students are getting, I think is important and it'll take them on to whatever uh, profession and education they're going into. As far as our, our uh, community college students, uh, they have different pathways. Some of them, uh, wanna, they look at this NCL as a job uh, experience and they uh, put that in their resume and uh, and they talk about the uh, competition when they're going into an interview and we try to promote that uh, so that does make a difference in a lot of, of whether you're going to get a job or not our students have had been very successful i think in getting jobs uh, because of the fact that they they played in the ncl or getting internships uh, we're in a rural area. It's very difficult. We don't have a lot of industry in our area, so they have to go outside. And everything we have is online. Our entire curriculum is online. So we have students from all over the United States that, uh, uh, so we don't, they can't just come into my office because unless they want to come into the virtual office and talk about these things. Uh, but uh, the NCL kind of brings that, uh, that that experience that they don't have in a, in a lot of cases is that the role of a coach part part of what makes a good coach is helping them with their resume skills and their interviewing skills and help, helping them translate their ncl experience and their scouting report into those areas so we're actually setting up a workshop um, with the year one and year two students in our program uh, where we're going to have the year one teacher interview me and I'm not going to know what the questions are going to be ahead of time. He's just going to look at my resume as it stands with my NCL experience and he's going to talk to me like he would if he was interviewing me for a job because he does hire uh, in his, his, his other job. Um, and we're going to show them how I always incorporate my NCL competition experience, especially into questions I don't know the answer to. I'll be like, well, it sounds very similar to this problem that I solved in NCL that I didn't really know how to do when I started, but this was my approach. Uh, that's my favorite interview answer. And then um, I've never gone into an interview where they didn't, oh, tell me about the National Cyber League. I see you've been competing, you know, this many times and wow, your scores have improved a lot. Yeah, so when I first started out, I, I didn't really know a lot, but I used this competition as a way to gain hands-on experience that I couldn't necessarily have a job and go to school at the same time. So this was my way of, you know, 
learning as best I could and and just having like those pre like knowing how to answer those questions in the way that the interviewers want you to is something that we're like taking a whole class day to teach. That's great. I think uh, I'll have to have my students uh, watch that video. Uh, I should film it. They don't have to do it more than once. Is there a quality, I, I, I really enjoy asking this question for the players, but is there a quality that coach a good coach should have? One or two qualities. Uh, I'm really quirky and I'm not boring. I feel like that's what I've got going for me. Um, I think the thing that helps my kids the most is that they know that I love this competition and they see how passionate I am and how excited I am. And even this season, um, I don't know if I'm competing this season. I don't know if I'm eligible to compete this season. Like got my hands in a lot of pots with NCL. I think I, I got to talk to you guys a little more, but even if I don't compete this season, um, as a coach, you get a portal and you can still access the competition. And one of the things I like to do is stay like one flag ahead of my kids as far as points so that they're like right there and then I'll let them beat me for a couple of hours and I'll come back in. And the fact that I like play games against them is definitely something they find interesting. Yeah, I think that's a good, good point. Now I don't do that. They probably beat me, <laughs> you know, <Right? laughs> which would be fine. I would, I love that. Uh, but I try to uh, let them understand that the experience is what's going to uh, help them. And uh, the more they practice, you know, practice makes uh, almost perfect. So uh, if you're going to be like an athlete, which I kind of look at this as an athletic game in a way, that you, uh, to be good at it, you have to continue to work at it. And uh, so I try to, to, to uh, encourage them to do that. And the other students that have been doing this help really promote and get everybody else excited. So uh, they don't really listen to an old guy like me, but they do listen to their peers. And that's what uh, we try to do is have, and you mentioned you have your students help help uh, the, the newer, newer students coming in. And I think that's the, the, uh, a key to the success for this. Um, I don't know as much about like what makes a good coach because I'm still kind of figuring that out myself, but I know like for me, the number one skill that makes a good competitor is stubbornness. Like I know that's kind of like a negative thing, but if you are so stubborn that you're not going to let it win, like you're going to find so many more flags out of sheer determination. I guess determination is the better trait, but stubbornness works better than determination because I think determination runs out. But like the people who are like stubborn to the point of like spiteful are the people who are going to win this competition. So a good, so a good coach can, so a good coach can cultivate stubbornness in players. Yeah. Can embrace it. I don't it. know if stubbornness is like good for the workforce or anything, but um, my stubborn players are the ones who do really well, and I'm really stubborn, and it helps me in the competition when like. I'm like beating my head against the wall and like screaming at my computer, like, why I did it right. I know I did like, ah, like that moment where it clicks over from determination. She's just, I'm going to get this. If it kills me, like I've gotten a lot of points that way. Yeah. I think persistence is what I would call it being persistent. Don't give up. Uh, and, uh, in a way you have to kind of be calm about these things. Uh, I mean, it's okay. It's healthier I'll, to be calm. Yeah, because uh, I kind of relate it back to: uh, uh, is it a life or death uh, activity here? It's not like uh, when I worked on the Apollo projects uh, in Apollo 13. Now that was a little different story. You know, we had to do hacking there too to get the the spacecraft back to the to the uh, uh, Earth. So, uh, uh, so you just think of all the challenges that you have and. Uh, then how you go about solving those problems. It's much like the Apollo project. And a little bit of healthy competition is fun too. Um, last season, we had three girls on the team at Pace University and the three girls came in first, second and third place. And like, we were poking the boys so much during the whole competition. 
and then like the boys would get a few more points and all three of us would panic and we'd like figure something else out like so it like healthy competition and like playfulness between competitors makes a big difference um having somebody that you can vent to during the competition is like oh i'm working on you know that end map challenge and i just can't figure out this well you don't necessarily tell them how to how to do it you can say like oh man no i struggled with that one too but i eventually got it hearing that just that statement, it, it makes it seem a lot more possible. So developing a good like team rapport and like your teammates are your biggest support system. I would agree, That's, it is. And uh, I think the uh, having a diverse team helps because people think differently. And I think uh, like women have a different perspective and you need all my bosses at from the time I was with Apollo all the way through my Exxon were women, believe it or not. So, uh, 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 I think they know. just had the advantage of like the three girls were all friends and we would like hang out and talk about this stuff, like <laughs> just for fun. Like that was, that was fun. Like, you know, so we, we got more practice time together. And I think that's what made the difference is like, we worked on more challenges together before the competition. So when the competition came, like we, we were already ahead. So again, like you said, it's like training for a marathon. Like you have to practice, you have to, you have to think about these things outside of the competition, outside of just practice hours. Um, we have practice for two hours twice a week and we have kind of like a come and go as you please policy because like the college students, they're adults. I'm not gonna tell you you have to be at every practice to be on the team, come and go as you please, but I'm not backtracking and you're going to work at, everybody works individually at their own pace. So one of the things I'll do is like, if somebody's struggling, I'll assign somebody I know that's good at that to like catch them up. But if you're only there, you know, once every couple of weeks, I promise you your score is going to be lower than the person who came every single practice. Bless you. That's right. And, uh, you know, we had, stu we, when we used to have the NDG net labs, we had those open and available to our students, even through the summer. And those students that had, uh, that used that, and, and you could see who was on the, on the labs, they were the ones that excelled in the competitions because they did this on a, just like I mentioned, they practiced all the time. They went in and looked at the areas they needed to improve on, and then they would go through those labs to help uh, learn and then uh, also uh, create their own uh, uh, puzzles, and, uh, which also can help you get an insight on how to solve these problems. All right. I All right. I, th I think that's a, a great place to wrap things up. Um, Stephen, Caitlin, thank you so much for being on the call today. And thank you all and who were listening to the call. We are recording this call. It will be available for future Ending viewing. Right and our next uh, coaches call will, will be in two weeks. But also tomorrow night on NCL Thursday Night Live, we will have Franz Payer from Cyber Skyline as, uh, as the guest. And Franz will also be talking about the upcoming spring season. Um, Thank you, everyone, for being on the call today. Uh, Caitlin, feel better soon. Thanks, guys. Um, and for those of you who struggle in crypto, I just wrote an introduction to cryptography on my blog. Uh, it's cryptocate.wordpress.com. Um, NCL links to it a lot. You'll find it. <laughs> I just passed that on to all my Blackboard students uh, last week, so you should be getting a lot I more I saw hits. a big surge. I was like, what happened? Who shared me? <laughs> Um, but it, it's actually a really good like first touch into cryptography. Um, I have that and a 30 minute lesson on numeric cryptography and that's all I do with my people for crypto and it covers it. I'll definitely I'll check it out. Bye. 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 Thank you everyone. Thank you everyone. She's great.